whatever your comfortable prayer position is. I like to get both of my feet on the floor to fully ground myself. Take that moment to sit up in my chair or stand up in my case. Take a good deep breath in. Hold it for a second and let it go. Allowing ourselves to pay attention to our breathing and to relax into the moment as we release that breath, just releasing ourselves deeper within to that place where God shows up through us. I am the place where God shows up. And in that, I ask how that feels what that means to me, what that looks like, what that sounds like. I am the place where God shows up. I'm going to start by claiming it, proclaiming in this moment that we are starting a service where God will show up through me, to me, for me, and as me. That me being each one of us individually and collectively at the same time that God is showing up in me, through me, to me, for me, and as me. I let it be well. I let it be so. And so it is. And amen. And I did not bring my script up, and I know I took things out of order this week. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Call to worship. Stand up if you'd like.
decision right here and now. Good morning and welcome home. I'm going to ask you all to repeat after me. If you're watching us virtually, please type this in the comments. Everyone look around at your neighbors and repeat after me. Good morning. Good morning. I, I love you this morning. I love you this morning. And I sure do appreciate you being here. To our virtual church community, please know that we're saying this to you as well. And help us grow this loving community by liking commenting, sharing, and subscribing to our pages. And please join me in reading these affirmations together. The affirmations are, as I face choices in my life, love is my decision. I am the love I seek, and I give it by giving it out to, to the world. Uh, and now, Amy Weaver and Tal Cruz are a brother-sister duo raised in a musical family. Their love for singing together developed in the church, and over time they began exploring new genres and writing songs of their own. They believe music is a powerful medium through which spirit can be expressed and healing and transformation can take place. Handsome brother Tal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> what was the name of the one of those uh, new glasses that we were listening to the James Taylor version? Uh. Oh, I can't remember. You guys have had uh, uh, one of the one of the uh, people that have done music recently pulled out a James Taylor song. We were listening back on that. Kind it was of just last out. week. Yeah, she yeah, just last week. What was mm -hmm. last week. Um, uh, so, but we were oh, Sarah. Sarah, yeah, yeah she did an great. excellent James Taylor cover, and we were thumbing through our stuff, and we found a James Taylor "Shower the People You Love with Love," you guys know and how it's kind of like, man. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> right. We yeah, we made it rain today. today. <laughs> yep. I thought we'd pull this one back out, though. Is it transposed? Ooh. Ooh. You can play the game and you can act out the part. Even though it wasn't written for you Tell me how can you stand there with your broken heart Ashamed of playing the fool One thing can lead to another It doesn't take any sacrifice Oh, father and mother and sister and brother If it feels nice don't think twice, just shower the people you love with love. Show them the way that you feel. Things are gonna work out fine if you only will. Do as I say, just shower the people you love with love. Show them the way that you feel. better if you only will you can run but you cannot hide this is why they know what you're gonna do with your foolish pride when you're all by yourself alone once you tell someone the way that you feel I think it's true what they say about that squeaky wheel Always getting the grease And it's a shower the people you love with love Show them the way that you feel Things are gonna be just fine if you only will What I'd like to do to you is shower the Shower the people you love with 
like pouring rain. Thank you. Now they heard me too. Um, all right, so uh, we try and we don't do it every month, but we try and once a month do this mastermind prayer. And uh, so I'm going to lead it today. And so I want everybody to take a moment before we get going. There's no magic tricks here. There's no like, oh, you got to say this word just this way so it's an incantation. You know, it's these are just words to help us focus our minds, right? And so, uh, but in the middle of this, you're invited to claim something. So I would like you to take a moment now to think of something you want to claim. And if you're working on a project, think of that. Think of the success. Think of what you're looking for in that. If you're like, I ain't got no projects. I, I'm retired. I don't want no projects. Then, um, you know, it's like uh, you probably want just that extra little glimpse of love. You know, so whatever your thing is, just take this moment to think of it. And don't worry, you don't have to be perfect because if you like, if you think of a different one once we get going, you're allowed to switch. You're in charge of your mind. Or if we're done, you're like, oh, I wish I would have done this one. I have this in my computer. I can email it to you, and you can say it again. So just pick one now, and then let us all say this together. I surrender. I admit that of myself, I am powerless to solve my problems, powerless to improve my life. I need help. I believe, I believe that a power greater than myself, God, the one presence and one power active in the universe can change my life. I am ready to be changed. I realize that erroneous, self-defeating thinking is the cause of my problems, unhappiness, fears, and failures. I decide to be changed. I make the decision to surrender my will and my life to the divine creator. I am willing to be changed at depth. I am willing to place my life under the direction of God and to remain open to divine will. I understand and I forgive. I understand that self-empowering thoughts and courageous actions prosper me now. I now forgive myself and all others for all real and imagined mistakes and shortcomings. I ask believing. In the awareness of my oneness with God, I ask believing that my heart's desire is fulfilled now. I state my specific request knowing that God is fulfilling my needs. My request is, I claim. I claim my heart's desire and affirm that I am now demonstrating it in my life. I give thanks. I give thanks that the God is now responding to my needs and I joyously assume the very feelings of my heart's desires fulfilled. I dedicate my life. I now have a covenant in which it is agreed that I am supplied with an abundance of all things necessary to live a successful and joyous life. I dedicate myself to be of maximum service to God, to live in a manner that sets the highest example for others to follow and to remain responsive to God's guidance. 
I go forth with a spirit of enthusiasm, excitement, gratitude, and expectancy. I am at peace. I am content. Amen. And so it is. Thank you. So I'm going to ask Bobby today, since I got feedback from the audience out there, you wonderful, sweet people, that uh, I was not, you were not able to hear me very well when I did the, the uh, reading last time. No, no, not quite yet, honey. <laughs> uh, that, so he's going to give me a big hand signal like this if, if, th if people start writing in that you're not able to hear me. So let's, since we are moving actually to uh, now into the season of Lent, or it's coming up soon, I have focused today's meditation on letting go, knowing that a part of what keeps us in the flow is both receiving and releasing. Charles Fillmore always talked about going into the silence. So let us prepare ourselves now for getting quiet and centering ourselves by taking in a deep, slow breath and releasing it. Count to four as you breathe in. Hold your breath for four. Release it to four. And then hold it for four. Breathe in again for four. Hold it for four. Breathe out for four. And hold it for four. Let us sit quietly for a moment and simply focus on our breath. Notice, noticing that breathing itself is an act of taking in and letting go. Taking in and letting go. Reminding us once again that being in the flow is about taking in and releasing. I am the flow of life. I am the flow of life. Today, I choose to free myself from anger. I release my emotional reactions and heal from within. I am the flow of life. I am the flow of life. Today, I practice the art of surrender, letting go of old ideas and hurts that no longer serve me. I take a moment and reestablish myself in the flow. I 
I am the flow. I am the flow. Today, I let go of apathy. Instead, I salute the divinity in me and take command of my life. I am in the flow. I am in the flow. Today, I let go of anxiety, knowing that God's desire for me is only good. No matter what the circumstances, I choose to keep my heart open. I am in the flow. I am in the flow of life. And so it is. Amen. I forgot. So, Nana, please bring forward our prayer box. So I am serving as your prayer chaplain today. So that's why I have on this stole. So no matter what you are growing through, our prayer chaplain team wants to pray with you about it. So seek one of us out after our service today. And to be included on our prayer list, you can fill out a form that is in the back and put it in the prayer box here before us or after the service. Or you can click on the prayer request button on our website. So we all agree, right, that prayer works. Yes, prayer works. So let's take a moment now and let the names of the people for whom you would like prayers to surface. And then imagining yourself dropping their names into the prayer box. I invite you to hold your loved ones in prayer along with the people in our prayer box and on our prayer list today. The Harris family. The Kennedy family. Jane Marsh. Ellie McFalls. Liz and Jean Armstrong. And all those names that you are holding in prayer. Together, let us affirm that these loved ones are whole, perfect, and complete. We are standing with them knowing that God is already actively working in partnership with each person to help them grow through the appearance of of challenges. We feel the love of God blessing each person's mind, body, and affairs. With gratitude, we accept the fullness of each person's healing at all levels of being, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. And because we have been promised that whatever we ask for believing we shall receive. We now release these requests fully and completely and give thanks for wherever we are, God is and all is well. And so it is. 
Amen. Good morning again. Hey, so let's talk about love um, and why it may be a decision or and why you may want it to be the decision, right? Um, so, like, the first thing to look at on this is uh, just the basic metaphysical definitions. And, and, and what unity teaches is that love is the ability to attract, to unify, to desire. And those are three kind of very different perspectives on that, right? So, like, if you feel like you need some love, the first thing you got to do is give some love because the first place you're going to get love from is through yourself. And so when you give it to someone, you got to drum it up inside of you and then send it out. But see, you get it first because you drummed it up inside of you. So you got to feel it first and you keep the remnant of that, if only in the muscle memory feeling of it tingling up in you before you gave it out. So um, that's how you attract it because that it becomes its own magnet. And, and, like, and that's all the different kinds of love, right? I mean, you know, not like confession time. You know, if you're single and on your own and you're, and you're wanting to not be, like, that's, a, you know, you can't go out and be like, I love you, you know, because that is not, that doesn't attract actually that like, <laughs> right? But like, if you just start by just being a loving person, that is giving love. And what does that mean? That means like having some empathy of understanding that maybe if somebody said something a different way than you would have said it, that like you can give them that space and offer that love of recognizing that maybe they're coming from a different perspective. Like that is giving love, right? And when you give that, you attract that same kind of understanding back to you. Probably not from the person you gave it to. So that's where, you know, we get caught up into that. Well, I gave them five dollars and they didn't give me nothing back. Well, that's because they needed five dollars, which meant they didn't have five dollars to give back to you because they need, you know. So the same thing, it's like it's the planting of the seed. And that's the one thing in that, that garden example that comes up that in the metaphysical world, you may plant the seed here and the manifestation of it may come from over here, right? So you just have to be willing to receive as opposed to being like, nope, I planted it right there. Not come up yet, you know. Because when you say that focused, you can, you're not able to receive, like it's there. It's there. Like uh, Abraham Hicks has a story that she told once about something she had lost, and she was sure that she had put it in her purse. And she had looked in her purse multiple times and couldn't find it. And then I think weeks had gone by, days at least. And she goes for something else in her purse when she's now not looking for that thing lost. And right there it was. Because when she was looking for it before, she was looking for the lost thing. And so she found the first part of that, the lost part, right? Because that's where she was focused. I can't find this thing. I can't find this thing. I can't find this thing, uh, you know. And so it's, you know, we are powerful beings. And so where we focus our minds is what we mostly will find you, because that's all we're able to see and hear in that moment. Like there are all kinds of things going on around us, right? But we only, if you're walking down the street, there's a whole lot of things said or, or to be heard that you don't hear because you're either listening to the radio because you're one of them, right? So if you're driving down the road and you got the radio on, you're one of the things to be heard. And that's the one you're probably hearing. So then maybe you're not hearing the person that saying something over, you know. So it's, it's about the focus and it's about being in that place to be willing to receive as opposed to looking for something specific. So, it also says here that uh, the disciple is John, and it says that John is the disciple because John represents unconditional acceptance and forgiveness. Like, I'm used to hearing unaccept, um, unconditional love, right? But then that becomes this broad concept that starts being like, well, what is love? You know? but I, so, I love that this says unconditional acceptance. 
I accept you as you are right here, right now, in the way that you are. You know, and I love you whether I would have worn that or not, or whether I would have said that or not, or whether I would have chosen that haircut. You know, um, I love you just like you are. I accept you. And when you accept, like that opens up that space within you as well, right? So uh, the other part that I love that's in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, there's a couple of things here to read. I, I mean, there's way more than what I put in here, but I thought these were particularly poignant for what we were talking about today. It says that love is a divine attribute. It is an idea in the one mind. God is love, and love is God, or a quality in being. The difference between divine love and human love is that divine love is broad and unlimited, a universal and harmonizing power. Human love is based on personality and is selfish, lawless, and fickle. Humans are broader than that. I would say that's ego love is the word I would choose there. By establishing ourselves in the consciousness of divine love and expressing that love at all times, we are helped to fulfill the command, love your enemies, do good to them that hate you, bless them that curse you, pray for them that despitefully use you. Ooh, social media does not tell us to do that. <laughs> right? right? Uh, the ego does not tell us to do that. Oh, you hate me? Well, I hate you too. You know? And it's okay that I hate you because you hated me first. And then and so I'm just giving it back to you. And it's like, yeah, but we are all in charge of our own planting of seeds. So I don't get to say, well, you did this. So then it was okay that I did this. Well, but I, now that I did this, I planted my own seed to manifest, right? So it's that part of the, your opinion of me is none of my business or the way we learn learned that as a child, I'm rubber, you're glue, whatever you say bounces off me and sticks on you, which means it never actually bounced off me. It, it stuck to you the second you said it or thought it or did it because we're all responsible for ourselves. So we don't get to say, well, you, mm -mm. unless it's like, well, you showed me a kind of love that I was not expecting, and I decided I was going to show some of that to somebody else that had no right to expect it from me. Right. Because that's the even though. Right. But, you know, that person was so rude to me. I think I'll take them a gift. Right. And um, don't take them food, though. They probably won't trust you to eat it. Um, but uh, so the last piece of this that I wanted to read is the development of divine love has its place in demonstrating supply. When love is established in the consciousness, it will draw to us all that we require to make us happy and contented, all that really belongs to us. And what belongs to you is everything good, all of it, yours, not somebody else. You know, it's like, oh, I, you know, you can say, I want to have a spouse just like that one. But you can't say, I want that spouse because that spouse already belongs to somebody else, right? But, but what you're, you're really responding to is, I love how I feel when I see those two interact. I want to find somebody to have a relationship like that and then call upon that. And it's not just about the romantic love and having a partner. It's, a, you know, it's on whatever, you know, I want a work relationship where I walk in and I feel appreciated. Okay, we'll start by appreciating other people and especially the ones that don't have anything directly to do with your job or, or aren't in a position to ever promote you. Start by appreciating them, right? Start by appreciating somebody that that you may be, that works in a different department if you work in a big enough place, right? And, and allow that to grow. Be the person that when they see you coming, they just relax and smile because they know you're going to be nice. Because in the workplace, you know, things get caught up in such a way that it's like, ugh, you know. Um, and when you do that, like doors open they, where you didn't, it's, it, like, that becomes a secret door. You're like, I didn't even know there was a door there. I didn't even know that was a possibility. I didn't even know that person could help me with this, right? Um, so the other part I want to look at um, 
Uh, Eric, can you pull up the lyrics of Love Is My Decision? I should have asked you in advance to do that. Can we think, Eric, Chris is home healing up, and so Eric is, is running the show today, and, and his, his mind really doesn't want to be with us because the Eagles are playing tonight, and that is really all he's truly thinking about right now. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and had I placed money on the table, I would have lost the bet because I think I told somebody yesterday, I said, I can assure you that he will be wearing Eagles gear tomorrow at church. But it's not on. But I know he's thinking it. Uh, so here's, um, yeah, we'll, we'll go with this one. It, they're all somewhat similar. I'm, I want to look at them all. But the first part of this song that I want to look at that we're singing all month long is, um, the second verse, which is love is my decision. No one else can. Oh, no, that's, that's part of one of the lyric lyrics. Um, can we go to the next slide that has like, yes. And once I decide to change my mind, God will show me how love is my decision, my decision right here and now. We sing that you know, on every verse and then repeat it again at the end. Right. So let's look at that in two parts. And once I decide to change my mind, God will show me how. So if we're in that moment and we feel something tense in the moment, something unhappy in the moment, this is the place where we can go with that and, and walk through, you know, that struggle. Or we can stop and say, I'm going to make the decision to have love in this moment. Because that is my power and my option and my choice. This is a decision to be made, not something to just to expect to happen. Not just in the obviously loving moments. In this moment where I'm feeling a challenge in this moment, where I'm on the phone with a customer service person and they are not giving me what I want. In this moment, I am going to choose love. And now I'm like, I don't know how to do love in this moment because I have practiced telling them off instead. So I now I got to figure out how to do love where I'm so I've already got muscle memory of how to push through this moment. Now I don't know how to do love in this moment. Well, it's OK, because God will show me how God, that spirit, that universal presence. When I just take the breath and say love will give me something to say that I wasn't going to say the natural way. And if it's like I take that breath and say, well, Wally said God would give me some different words here and I don't have any words. That's because the message is shut up. And at like just silence is golden. Or um, I, an eighth grade, this, this is how you never know who's going to say something to stick with you. An eighth grade substitute teacher said, Silence is golden, so shut up and get rich. And it's stuck with me ever since then, right? So, you know, it's like, okay, I'm choosing love, and I know that that universal presence that is love will show me how to use it in an unexpected way or an expected way. Like, I will know how to do this simply by asking and expecting the answer. Della used to say it often. Um, she's like, um, in the prayer, she's like, God, I know that you hear me when I pray, so I will say thank you now. Like, that wouldn't for some outside presence known as God that's like, hey, thank you for listening. I, I know you were listening. It's, it's an affirmation. I know that when I pray that that higher presence that is within me is there hearing, listening, acknowledging, accepting, and answering. So I will know the way. And then it says... Love is my decision, my decision right here and now, which means, well, I'll try that tomorrow. No, you know, okay, well, then that will have to be your right here and now. The current one, you don't get to have the, the, um, all the goods and the rewards of it now if you're going to choose to practice it tomorrow, right? See, that's the thing. Love is always fully, constantly, already available in every single moment in all the different ways that love may exist. Like the, the love between people be either romantic or between a parent and a child or between best friends, that kind of love, but also just that love of like, of, of, of charitable work, of, of doing good for the sake of doing good, even if you never know who it is you did good for. Um, 
I was talking to somebody the other day, like 12 years ago now when I put out that Christmas novel and I was going around and I was meeting people and this lady who had worked for my parents like decades, but like two decades before probably. I mean, she came to meet with us, she and her husband, her now adult child and her fiance. And this lady had worked for my parents when she wasn't married. And, um, and the way she got to that job was we needed somebody at the dry cleaners. And um, I, call, I, I had known her sister um, at a job at the mall. And so I'd gotten her sister's number to call to see if her sister would come apply for the job. And this lady answered the phone and she said, oh, well, she's working at such and such now, but I need a job. And I said, well, come on down and put in the application. And she did, and she got the job. And then I left Eden and went to New York and like was living a different life. But while she was still there, uh, you know, my dad and a family friend who owned a different business, he had a guy working for him. And he said, we need to introduce these two. And, um, and then they got together and then they got married. And then, I, and then they moved away and I never saw them again. And now 20 some years later, because I made a phone call to see if a lady who I never saw again in my life wanted a job, I'm sitting there that moment created this family that I was sitting in front of. And so you never know what good just by being open and willing. And I'm not saying I did anything great. I'm saying like something that seemed meaningless in the moment, like we just needed somebody to do this job at the dry cleaners. And that moment by being open and willing Right. By not saying, no, I was calling for your sister. Goodbye. Click, you know, by, you know, saying, yeah, OK, let's move forward. And then I didn't even know about any of that because life moves on in its own directions. And that's so that's just to say that if we choose like even like I did that one mindlessly, if we say, no, I'm choosing to make love my decision right now, think about all the wonderful things that are happening in the world from that decision that you may never know about again, but you can accept. Like I now know if I make that decision that there will be good that will flow from it that I will likely never hear from again. I know that because I had this example. And so you all can have your, and I got blessed in that way because of this other thing, right? And so, but it doesn't, the good was still out there whether I consciously knew about it or not. So um, I wanted to real quick look at, uh, I was trying to go shorter today, but I do want to real quick look at these uh, lyrics. The first lyric says, love is my decision. It's up to me to give of my heart. Love is my decision. No one else can tell me to start. Not true, lots of people can tell you to start, but they can't make you start, right? And even if, they, if it's somebody, you're like, well, if she made me do this. No, like you're not actually, you've not, if you're thinking that and feeling that, you've not actually gotten to the love part yet. So nobody has made you do anything yet. Like you still have to make the decision to get to that final push of it, right? The, the other verse says, love is my decision. It's up to me to stand on that bridge. What bridge? between the loving and the not loving. Uh, love is my decision. No one else can make me forgive. That's a very true statement. No one can make, they, somebody can say, you get over here and you say, I'm sorry. And then the way they say it is, I'm sorry that you made me do that. That you're right, right? So like it's the, it because, because the forgiving is a willingness to release within you, right? Like that's a whole topic that we've talked about many times and we'll talk about many more and we're not gonna right now, right? But it's about a, a willing to release within you. You can't say, well, I'll forgive you, but I won't forget. Well, then you, not, you know, then you're insisting on holding on, which means you've not for, you've not given forward anything. Okay, last one. Love is my decision. It's up to me to dance down that road Love is my decision. No one else can lighten my load. There are plenty of people in our lives can certainly help us, and we can feel grateful when they show up to help. I know Ellie has told us recently how grateful she is when people are showing up and, and helping her, and she's in a place she doesn't need people the whole time now, but how grateful she is when, when somebody does show up in that way. And we all have those kind of examples in our lives. So, of course, people can show up to lighten the load, but see... We have to be willing to accept when they get there because if we're like, oh, well, no, I'll take care of this. No, 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 I don't need, I don't want to bother you. I, I, you know, and then meanwhile, you're like, no, I, I, I can get it. You know, no, don't, you know, 
just let it let accept see uh, one of the gifts you can give somebody is to receive what they're offering to give because otherwise you're putting a dam in in their getting to their receiving stage because you got to give before you can get to the receive part right or you know so because that's the law i didn't write it um i just talk about it a lot that is really it i invite you all to choose something today where you choose love and if you can find a spot that it doesn't feel like a natural place you would even think about love and say i'm gonna give some love into this moment i invite you to check that out and then tell us about it later i love you i bless you i behold the christ that absolutely is you and eric is waving at me oh yeah we know we're getting to that with the announcements yeah um so uh now is our time for our love offerings and tithes and i don't see gala um okay um so i will do this part um uh, so within our love offerings and our tithes there are multiple ways that you can give does anybody do the text to giving i'm just curious because we put that in place and i don't know of anybody who actually uses it where you can uh, if you type that number into your text and then you text the word give, it walks you through the process. It's there, available to people if anybody ever wants to test it out. Um, and then there is, what else does it say? We have Venmo, which is unity-greensboro. The dash is there. Um, uh, the online giving, you can always click donate buttons. And many of us now go into Easy Tithe and set it up as like a regular monthly you can do weekly monthly whatever you want to do on all those things or you can give of yourself here in the room and whatever those ways are we say thank you in advance and uh, if you give electronically i invite you to place your hands on your heart and otherwise direct your attentions towards a gift and let us all say this prayer together divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that i have all that I give and all that I receive, and I am grateful. And so it is on that. And let's, let's say some thank yous towards the gifts as they come around. to sing thanks <clears throat> so as you <clears throat> excuse me so let us once again take a moment of quiet to tune into our heart space and experience our many many blessings we know from our teachings that where our attention goes energy flows so with this in mind we choose to hold an attitude of gratitude and one of prosperity. We give thanks for this day. We pay attention to the many ways that we are blessed 
and the many gifts that we receive. And from this place of appreciation and joy, we turn our attention to the gifts we joyfully offer in support of our ministry, a ministry that serves us and nourishes us. A ministry we take joy in supporting with our time, our talent, and our treasure. We bless this ministry. We see it growing and reaching out, touching others with its powerful message of oneness, unity, and love. We lift our hands and infuse this love offering with energy, gratitude, and love, and dedicate it to our awakening and the awakening of all humankind. Together, we transform our lives and co-create a prosperous spiritual community that blesses the world. And so it is. Amen. All right, I'm going to start the announcements, and um, and Kathy, you're, you're going to speak about ushers too. Um, so, as we're preparing for the annual meeting, if you haven't filled out your membership form yet, please do. There should be some in the back, or it's in the e-blast. Uh, thanks for everybody that has yet. We're asking you to consider joining different teams, and so two that I'll tell you about now is... Our finance team has been retitled the prosperity team. And um, so uh, Bill is our team leader on that. And in that vein, uh, uh, for the annual meeting next week, we'll be uh, electing new board members. And we still need someone who's willing to step up and serve as a treasurer. Not as an accountant, we already have one of those. You don't have to run a highly successful business. If you're just curious enough to say, Hey, does this expense that we paid match up to the the um, budget and like bring the uh, board's attention to it and that, those sorts of things? Ask questions of Belinda who does the books, that sort of thing, so that we know what's happening, right? So um, please consider that as well. And then uh, if you are musically inclined and I've never asked you to do anything with us, it's because I do not know. So... Um, you know, there are always places, especially Fifth Sundays, part of work in the budget. We, uh, we use Fifth Sundays as a place that we only use our in-house people, volunteer music. So we always want more there as well. And um, as Kathy comes up, we've got a video from Ellie about the adult ed team. Hello, my friends. I'm supposed to be there today to talk about the adult education team. And as you can see, I'm not. Um, this is the best I can do today. Um, I won't be back for a little while longer. But to tell you about the team, I'm excited to be on this team because we get to decide and look at what we'd like to do for future workshops and presentations to the congregations and it's fun to be able to decide you know what we'd like to see and I would love for you to be a part of that now you don't have to be a teacher you don't have to teach anything but we need help um, you know putting things together and having people sign up and register and all that and any help would be really really appreciated would love to have you on my team and hope to see you soon. Okay, I'm here for ushering. Um, last week, Brenda Kennedy uh, asked you if you could read, and we all raised our hands, and that was for being able to read the script. All right, I'm asking a question today, and how many of you would like to give gifts? Nobody? <laughs> I hope everyone likes, enjoys giving gifts, and a lot of people like to receive gifts. Well, you can be a gift as an usher. 
Your smile and your greetings can be a gift to a new guest or to people who regularly come here or people who come here once in a while. You are a gift to them in greeting and smiling and knowing that they are welcome here. Um, this is an opportunity for you to get to know other people and to um, be, be a friend to other people here. Um, we, as a greeter and as an usher, we pass out bulletins and collect offerings and among other things. Um, as an usher, you would serve with another person and, one, and it would be once or twice a month. Uh, the schedule is flexible. Every month I send out an email asking what uh, days, what Sundays are not going to be good for you. And so I arrange a schedule for everybody's desire. And um, we welcome you uh, to serve the church as an usher. Thank you. All right, so it's time for them to shine. If you are a first time visitor or haven't been here in a long time and have received a welcome bag, please fill out the visitor connection card and give it to an usher so that we may stay connected. If you haven't received a bag, please raise your hand. We have a gift for you. All right, so the Unity of Greensboro annual meeting will be next Sunday, February 19th, immediately after the service. Uh, in the meantime, please fill out the 2023 UIG congregant card located on the back table or electronically in today's newsletter via the link. Tuesday's newsletter, I'm sorry. This will need to be done um, to be a voting member for the UIG annual meeting on February 19th. And then meditate like a monk with Rod Randolph, February 15th at 6.30 p.m. and that will be Zoom only. And Positive Intelligence with Trudy Tobias will be Tuesdays, February 21st through March 28th, 6.30 to 7.45, and that is also Zoom only. And this will be how to increase your capacity to respond to life's challenges with positive rather than negative mindset. Let's start spreading that love. Uh, the deadline to register will be February 19th. Fee in advance will be $60. And information on how to register is on the iPad in the back on the website, the eBlast, and the Church Center app. And now, more special music performed by Amy and Tal. And Tal, your handsome brother-in-law. <laughs> I called to get you handsome used earlier. To yeah, you we, picked we, up we got on a handsome that. in yeah. there. This is another one you guys might recognize. The Young Bloods. Uh, what is it? Get together. Get together. That's yeah. right. Come on, everybody. Come on, microphone. Come on, microphone. Get now. together. <laughs>
Thank everybody for coming out and daring to possibly get wet today. Um, and, uh, and thank you all for not daring to get wet, but still watching us virtually as well. So um, next week, uh, we're going to be looking at, what's the title again for my, oh, Lord, it's here somewhere. I think it's called Waking Up. That's it. Waking Up is next week. And our musical guests are right here. John and Candy will be back doing the music next week. So. So at this time, uh, we're going to try and love each other without singing the peace song because it's after 11 o'clock. So uh, well, let's all do the prayer for protection together. If you'd like to hold hands, do. If not, uh, just place your hands up in the air and people will know that you're doing that. And let us all say together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, love is, peace is, light is, God is, and all is well. All right. Thanks, everybody. God bless. Go Eagles. Go Eagles. Go Eagles. Or, or the other team. <laughs>